This is my version one bike that I've been riding. And I've taken this on some big adventures and some of the biggest rides I've ever done in my life. They are the longest rides I've ever done in my life. Because of the battery and the motor, I can take this thing out so far and it gives me a smoother ride, more stability. It's a very good riding bike. You know, usually you wanna have a bike as light as possible because we're pedaling it around and we wanna save energy. We don't wanna to have to carry extra weight up the hill. It makes sense to have a lighter bike, but then again, a heavier vehicle ends up with a smoother ride, like a old big heavy Cadillac or a heavy truck. It'll kind of roll down the road smoothly where you get a really light bike or a little skateboard or a little tiny car, it'll just kind of shake and uh, bounce around more. The LWB HDE has the longest wheelbase out of all of our bikes, one inch longer in the rear end compared to the standard LWB frame and bike. And then with the battery down here and the motor down here, it has a very low center of gravity. So when you pull on the brakes aggressively, really forcefully, it's very hard to get this to endo. It's extremely hard to have a regular LWB bike endo, but a regular bicycle is pretty top heavy because you have a bike down here that's very light and then a rider right around here so your center of gravity is about here but when i have on a setup like this my center of gravity is dropping a lot and i can just grab a fistful of both brakes as hard as i can the bike doesn't endo it's kind of like a car that way that it's so stable that way and then the extra weight i was thinking i would want a bike to be as light as possible all the time when i first got this big battery pack and i was experimenting with the big packs the, the way i was thinking was that i should I'll put these on only for long rides and then I'll put really small packs on for short rides because that'll be the best way. But it turned out that if I'm not bunny hopping things and jumping things, but I'm just riding for distance and riding rough trails, then the bigger pack was better because I could ride up and down steeper trails, much steeper trails with this lower center of gravity. I had better traction because the extra mass on the bike would make the tires absorb things better. Where if the bike is light and you're standing up, it can kind of dance across the rocks and you're kind of skittering along if you're flying down a rocky trail where with this extra weight on it, it's like crushed into the ground and it's just rolling and gripping everything. So I've, I've gone places and ridden steep trails and things that I've never thought I could ever, ever do. And I didn't really do it. The battery helped me and the motor helped, but I was out there riding it and it was great. It was very fun. This bike has a 750 watt motor, 48 volt battery pack, and a top speed of 20 miles an hour. And I have a thumb throttle, but I also have a pedal assist. So whenever I pedal, it turns on and runs and I can set it in several different levels. It's a pretty easy bike to ride. You just turn the switch on right in the front. And right now I'm on level zero. If I pedal right now, it just pedals nice and easy. It's an easy bike to ride. There's a lot of hub motor bikes out there that when you run out of power, you find out that that hub's very hard to turn. But with this, it's pretty much like riding a bike. If you're not going up a hill or if you're not bunny hopping over things, if you're just riding down the road, the extra weight hardly matters. You can feel it on acceleration, you know, off of a red light pulling away if you're not using the motor, it's just a heavier load. I actually wanna show you how the motor goes in there because it's so simple. I have the motor right here. So this is facing forward. The chain ring goes on this side, right there. This is the HD motor. It has uh, bigger cooling fins and some more durable parts. It's pretty simple. The bottom bracket slides in to the bottom bracket right there. It comes out the other side. You tilt this to that position. And then on the other side, there are some spacers and a nut that goes out here and then a cover. There's a plate that goes around here to reinforce it. And that way it's mounted on both sides. The controllers inside of there. And then the display, the interface is up on the handlebar. And one thing I really like about it is you can take it off. If these bikes had an integrated motor or an integrated battery pack, then you could only ever use that motor or that battery pack or something that would fit. And often bottom bracket mounting standards have changed over time. So in a few years, there'll be a lot of bikes out there that you, you probably won't be able to get motors for or you can't find something that works because the, the, the design has changed. Uh, I have an example of one over here. Let me bring this out. I built these a few years ago. We haven't really shared this bike much. We had it on Facebook, but I didn't really say much about it. Some people think it's a bike that we'll have in the future, but this is a bike we did in the past. This is an integrated Bosch motor in a Titanium Jones LWB. This is the predecessor to the HDE e-bike. This is the first e-bike that we produced. 
It's a really nice system. This thing works very nicely. It has a very smooth feel and it feels just like I'm pedaling the bike. It has a torque sensor so that when I'm pedaling, the harder I pedal, the more power it gives me. So if I pedal harder, it'll put out more power to make me go faster. And it does make it easier to vary your speed when riding with somebody else because you can kind of slow down just by soft pedaling a little bit. But the LWB HD e-bike with the Bafang motor that I was riding, I liked how it gave out a more constant power. Whenever you're pedaling in the different power levels, you get kind of a fixed power it's, it's more efficient riding if you're not accelerating and decelerating a lot. And when I ride this bike, or when I was testing this bike, every time I pedal hard, it would kind of take off. So even if I'm descending down a hill, it would give me more power and I didn't really want more power all the time. I kind of wanted a constant power. The constant power doesn't feel as much like it's me pedaling though. This bike with the torque sensor makes me feel more like it's me pedaling and putting out the extra power because as I push down, it gives me more power, which makes it feel like I just did that because I just pedaled harder and I felt that extra torque it's me. And then when I get back on a regular pedaling bike, I feel pretty weak. If you pedal harder with a torque sensor, the battery puts out more power to the motor. But on this bike with a pedal sensor, when you pedal harder, the motor doesn't actually receive any extra power. It just experiences that it doesn't need to put out as much power. So the harder you pedal, the longer your range becomes. And it's kind of become like a game when I go riding to see how far I can extend the battery by pedaling really hard when I'm on this bike because I can just run it at a low enough level that gets me going just as fast as I want and then just pedal on top of that the whole time. If I'm riding up a hill and I just want to kind of take it easy and sit up for a second, I can sit up on this bike and it keeps putting out the power and I don't just slow down all of a sudden. Where on this bike, it does make me pedal harder so that if I'm trying to sit up and relax, I either have to run a higher power level or I just have to continue pedaling hard to maintain the speed I was going. It's not a big deal. It's just there's two different ways this can be done. If I look at this as uh, for a vehicle and not just for being what somebody would consider an e-bike, you know, the laws that make up the definition of what an e-bike is, because an e-bike is, is almost defined by being a, a motorized bicycle, which is not defined as a motorized bicycle. It's a motorized cycle that's not described that way under law if it has less than 750 watts and if it doesn't go over 20 miles an hour in most states. So the definition of an e-bike is mainly about how fast you can go and how much power it can put out. And I started realizing this. I started realizing that my ideal of what an e-bike should be, which would be something that has a torque sensor to just give me more power exactly at the same time, and also to make sure that I'm pedaling because I'm probably too lazy, so I need to have instant reward of pedaling harder to have the benefit or something. Because on this bike, you can take it easy, but that's okay. There's nothing in the laws that say it has to be a bike where you have to work really hard to keep going. It just says it can't go any faster than a certain speed and it can't have more power than a certain level. Having this allows me to ride it differently. I could go out and buy a motorcycle or a scooter or drive around in a car, but I can get on this and I can ride on a hot day someplace and not sweat if I want to because I can pedal softly and I'm still pedaling kind of hard, but I'm not pedaling so hard that I'm just starting to sweat all over the place. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's what I like about this system. This is nice and I like it, but I like this. And it's two main reasons. It's what I'm talking about with the way the power works, how this is, I feel better for transportation and for going long distances. And you can have a throttle on it or not. The main reason is, is that here's, here's this beautiful titanium bike and we produced a few of them. I think I have four of them. And right after we got it, they changed the motor design to where now the bolts were in a different position. And it was for good reasons. They improved the spacing. They were able to make it so you could have a shorter chain stay and stuff like this. But it meant that you couldn't put the new motor in here. And it also means that these parts will only be supported for a certain amount of time because stuff like this isn't supported forever. You know, 20 years, 10 years, I don't know how long it'll be. But at some point you can't get parts and you're kind of stuck with the old stuff. You could just say, well, you just get a new bike, but bikes can last a really long time. And with this, you could make it back into a bike if you needed to, for any reason. If you just wanted it to be a pedal bike, or if you couldn't get electricity for some reason for a long time, this could be turned back into a bike. Where this bike, if you can't get electricity, you're stuck with this on here and you can't put standard cranks on it. You can't, unless you make a bracket and weld a bracket that will adapt to crank set. Maybe that'll be a thing that people will make in the future is an adapter so you can bolt them into your bike to turn them back into bikes. This one isn't like that. It can be a bike, it can be a motorbike, you can change the motor. You can work on the motor. There's manuals on this motor. There's information on the internet. This motor has tamper resistant bolts so that you don't take it apart. It's probably a good idea. You don't take it apart. It's probably a good idea you don't take that one apart. But a lot of people know how to work on things and if you know how to work on stuff and you take responsibility for that, you can work on these and repair them and rebuild them or find a friend that knows how. I, I took that motor apart and re-greased it and it was so nice and smooth and quiet and it was easy to work on. I didn't get stuck anywhere as far as it being complicated or something. It was pretty straightforward. It's a basic design. 
and it was nice to be able to do that on my own, where this one, you have to send it to the factory or a, some special place. I've been trying a lot of different types and designs for a while now, trying to figure out what kind of e-bike we were eventually going to do, because after riding them, I just knew it would be something we'd do. I started out with a Bafang motor on a standard LWB bike, and it worked really well. I eventually built these. They worked the way they worked. I like some things about them, but I like this a lot more. But I knew a lot of people would want this one. I knew it would be, it's a nice option. It's all, it's all, it's tidier, it's cleaner, more integrated. And, and maybe it's like hidden better because everyone was worried about whether or not somebody could tell you're on an e-bike or something. And I kept thinking, what's, who cares? They see you driving your car. They know you're driving big stuff. This is not a big deal. And this isn't a big deal. And this has more wires. You can see more stuff hanging off of it a little bit. The motor's kind of out there and exposed. The battery pack's pretty obvious. Even if it looks better, I still prefer that because it's not about the looks to me, but I still wanted to make these. It's just, I couldn't do it after I realized that I'm selling a titanium bike to a lot of people who are telling me this is the last bike they're gonna buy. And then know that at some point you might call me and say, hey, I can't even get a motor for it in my, whatever the gear stripped or something and you can't fix it. What are you gonna do? I like this and it's a good system. I'm really impressed by it, but it really wouldn't take me to the same places as that bike. One thing I remember when we were testing these all together was that on group rides, nobody really wanted to ride this bike because it couldn't keep up with that. This one, you have to keep pedaling really hard for one thing to keep it going, and it just doesn't put out as much power. It's running lower voltage, lower wattage. In the US, you can have up to 750 watts, and this isn't even close to that. So that's this bike. This was one of the things in the development of the Jones electric bike or Jones motorbike, because it is a motorbike. You know, if we go by the naming system, it was a bicycle. Then the motors came along and there were motor bicycles and motor bikes and then motorcycles. Then you have an e-bike or an electric bicycle, again, because of the, the law that says it can be a bicycle. It's still a bicycle. We're saying, hey, it's still a bike. We know it has a motor and it's a cycle. We're not going to say it's, a it's not a motorcycle. It's not a motorcycle because it's less than 750 watts. It's not a motorcycle because it only goes 20 miles an hour. So legally, it's not a motorcycle. But by definition, it's a motorcycle in a way, of course, because it's a motor and a cycle. But it doesn't really matter. We're allowed to ride these things up to this speed with this much power, and they're very good for transportation. And having extra power helps a lot because you can really go up the hills faster. You don't have cars passing you as fast. The passing speed is a lot lower when you're going faster. When you're really going slow, you know, the cars are flying past you. There's more chances of being hit. Right here, this is my street legal bike that I've been playing with, and I'm not done with it. I have a lot of work to do. I've switched out to some carbon wheels. They're lighter and wider. I like the extra width of the wheel because it gives my tire even more stability than the aluminum rim, which is 50 millimeters wide on the outside. I added the kickstand, super nice to have that, and I can adjust the gears or lube the chain with that out on the road. I added a dropper, of course, and I can get the seat up nice and high so I can pedal hard when I want to. I can get down and tuck when I'm descending because we want to go as fast and as far as we can. That's what I want to do. If I'm descending a hill and I can get down into this position, right behind the bars here, I go faster, I go further with less energy loss, but also better handling because when I'm down like this, I can put on the brakes extremely hard and now, now there's no way I'm gonna endo because I'm so far behind that front axle and I can absorb bumps while I'm doing it. This is a rack I've made and a little pad to sit on. This is the V1 bike, the first version. And it has SX 12 speed with an 1150 cassette, all steel cogs or sprockets. And this is more durable. Most cassettes have an aluminum large sprocket. It's all right, but it wears quicker, especially on an e-bike. You put more force through the drivetrain because the motor is running through the drivetrain. The benefit of having a derailleur system or gears with an electric motor is that you can keep the motor running in its more optimal RPM range. If you keep the motor revved up, kind of like when you're pedaling, if you pedal at a higher RPM, it's easier on your knees. It's more efficient. If you run at a low RPM, it's less efficient. And hub motors are like this. If you're climbing up a hill at a slow speed, they'll heat up a little bit because they're not operating in their optimal speed range. But besides the efficiency, you get a lot of torque and speed. If you put this in first gear, it's very torquey and it'll put out a lot of torque and get you up very steep stuff. And this is what my bike's based on. This is a medium limited edition blue, light blue, semi-matte paint with the Bafang HD motor. We still have some of the version ones in stock. So if you'd prefer this bike, take a look. We have more than one version of bike. There's the V1, that's this, has SRAM 12 speed and BB7 brakes. And then there's the version two. The version two has box two, nine speed drivetrain and the Al Hanga brakes. The bicycle, the pedal bike, is available with hydraulic brakes also. These bikes have a motor cutout switch 
The Bosch bike doesn't have that. So if I'm riding along and I'm pedaling and it's putting out power, I just, I have to accept that. That's what it's doing unless I can reach over and change the setting because the motor's gonna have, the motor's gonna put out power. So if I'm going really slow and I wanna make a U-turn, it still puts out the power. But with this bike, it has some switches in the brake lever so that when you pull the brake, it's a cutout. It turns the motor off, keeps it from spinning. It's kind of like a clutch. You pull in the brake and then you don't have any power. So if you, if you wanna ride along for a second, just pedaling under your own power, maybe you're riding between people and zigzagging nice and slow or something, and you don't want it to kick in, you just pull the lever in a little bit. Don't even drag your brakes just a little bit and it cuts out. So it's a nice thing to have to be able to just cut the motor whenever you want without having to reach for anything other than just a little bit of brake lever. There's also a shift sensor on these bikes. This is a gear sensor and the gear sensor senses when you shift the gear and it can tell because your cable runs right through it and there's a little wheel and the wheel sits up against the cable and right when the wheel senses the turn and it will send a signal to turn off the motor for like a second or two. And this way during the shift, your motor stops putting out power. Just like when you shift, you really shouldn't pedal as hard as you can while you're shifting. The bike shifts a little better if it's not under a load. And that's what this does for you. I don't know if we have them in all sizes, but we still have some of the version one bikes. E-bikes and pedal bikes. I don't know if there's any frame sets. Just contact us, email us, call us. I showed you my bike. And this bike is, again, based on that one, you can see I switched to the truss fork. Again, carbon rims. I have a carbon bar, handlebar bag. These lights wired into a, I have a voltage converter down here. The battery pack is 48 volts, but I need 12 volts up here and 12 volts in my lights so that I can have nice bright lights and I can charge my phone or a camera or whatever right off of my USB ports by running it through this. And now I have some of the 48 volts being converted to 12 volt power for me so I can run any automotive or motorcycle equipment that I would want. I can put headlight, turn signals, horn, brake light, really bright tail light. I have an always on really bright tail light so everybody can see me from really far back. And it doesn't use much of my battery pack. Fenders are always nice on a bike. I mean, if this is a vehicle and I'm trying to get around, I wanna stay clean, I wanna stay comfortable. Really, I'm not trying to race this bike, I'm trying to use it to get places. So having the fender keeps me clean, keeps things out of my eyes, keeps the bike a lot cleaner. I kind of have it set up to be as practical as possible. Instead of trying to look like a bike and act like a bike and be like, look, it's a racer position bike with skinny tires for better acceleration while hiding the motor in the down tube because e-bikes are cheating, but you can't tell I have an e-bike now, look at this. No, instead it's just, there it is. The motor's bolted in through the bottom bracket. If you look on the left side of the bike, there are more wires because you have the main control wire and I have uh, one extra wire running up here for the headlight and some other stuff, but it's simple. I've done a 150 mile ride in one day, 152 miles in one day with I think 12 or 14,000 feet of climbing almost without stopping on this bike. I had this battery pack and two more packs, uh, smaller packs in the fork packs. I had extra battery juice every day. And if I was on level ground or something and I didn't do all that climbing, I could have gone a lot further. These can really do some big, big distance. This battery pack has 49 amp hours. It's a big pack. We have two sizes of battery pack in this style. This type will use a key so you can lock it on and keep it on and then it slides off the frame. We have these in 10.4 amp hour. That's what this one is, or 17 and a half amp hour. But we also have this other option. This is a really large battery is what it is. And this is the one that is super long range. And this we have available also in things like this. There are a lot of battery types out there and running a name brand cell is a good idea. Uh, everything I've ever heard, everything I've seen says that they're more likely than not to be much better than a, a standard generic Chinese cell. That's why I spec this with Samsung cells. So Samsung cells, 10.4 amps, it's 48 volt battery pack, 500 watt hour. This is the same size as the Bosch 500. Then 17, not quite double, but it's a lot more. Here's another bike. This was uh, one I did a long time ago. This is based on the V1 Jones Plus, short wheelbase bike. And this frame is not warranted or designed for having a motor. However, this motor is a pretty weak motor. I think it's 250 watts. It's pretty easy on the drivetrain and it works pretty nicely. It's, it's fairly noisy because it has a gear in it and it's a brushed motor. So it was very cheap. I think it was $80 but I like it. It's just easy to ride with and I can change the gearing and I can remove it. It just costs so little that I could just kind of convert any bike I had with this, or you could even add this to a Jones HDE. This motor would work and they have these in different sizes, but I did have to work on the brackets and there's some DIY, you know, this stuff you have to do and know what you're doing to do this and do it safely. So I don't recommend doing this, 
And I plan on going over some more of what I've done on these bikes. If you're interested, let me know. This is my shopping bike. Kind of have it set up so I can go to the store to get some bread or bananas or something. And I have fender in the back. I haven't installed the one on the front. And a kickstand that clamps on. It's an easy do kickstand. It fits on there. My light zip tied on, so hopefully it stays when I park it. And I have it set up with a very low gear, gear ratio, so it has a lot of torque and it's a lot of fun. It barely goes 20 miles an hour and it's simple. This bike has a much bigger, more powerful motor. This one I think goes up to 1200. So that's a lot of power and it's, it's an illegal bike on the street because the way it's set up now is you either have to go below 20 miles an hour with less than 750 watts or you step beyond that one inch and now you have to be a full motorcycle. There are sometimes classes like uh, moped and scooter, and, but uh, nothing else. So this bike, I've done some testing on private property only and safe areas. It works pretty nicely. It's fast, smooth, and light, and it's much faster than I can go on my own. And it's fun because I can change the gear ratios. It feels a lot more bicycle-like because it is so light because it's a pretty small motor. The battery pack's not that gigantic, but it's still pretty big. So it's a lot of good power and a lot of torque. But just getting behind this little windscreen helps a lot. And then this, which I'll go over more in detail later, this is the one that had to be a motorcycle. And this is my testing rig. This bike is currently registered as a motorcycle. So legally, this is a motorcycle. I've been testing the Jones HDE frame on this the whole time since the first frame I've had. And it's doing really well and it's holding up. And that's with a lot of extra weight on it and a lot of rougher riding and long miles and speed. And it's teaching me a lot about drivetrain, brakes, tires, wind resistance, and everything. After some time of modifying this, I did get it up to around 50 miles an hour, but I couldn't go much faster. And then I put a little windscreen in the front and I went a lot faster, much easier. And now I have a pretty nice wraparound in the front here. About two weeks ago, I jumped on the freeway and I maxed out at 72 miles an hour. And coming down like this, it's nice. And it's very comfortable behind this thing too. This is the Jones HP1, stands for High Performance Experimental Research and Development Test Bicycle. Maybe this is something about the future. This is a lightweight motorcycle that can be pedaled because you can pedal this. You can, um, the cranks move and it, they really work like normal and the seat goes up. So I can pedal this around just like nothing except for that it's heavy, but it's not that bad to pedal. But I can also pedal while I'm riding it and go even further. So right now I have this, so I have a longer range and with matching top speeds and probably better acceleration than some motorcycles I'm seeing out there. It's a pretty quick bike and it goes very far. Generally I can go about 50 miles with 5,000 feet of climbing is, and that's with an average speed, I think it's like 38 miles an hour, something like that. So sometimes I'm going along just at 55 miles an hour, just going down the road and sometimes faster, especially downhill. It's amazing, you know, you think you have to have suspension on a bike until you realize that they invented motorcycles when the roads were very rough and they didn't have suspension on the first motorcycles. This works like the old motorcycles. A lot of the first motorcycles, you look at them, they look like a bike, they had a truss fork, they have a crank set, they shorten their cranks, these are a little shorter, and they have a motor right here, a gas motor, and you use the cranks to kickstart it or to get it going. And that's how a motor, that's how the motorized bicycle became the motorcycle. And then uh, they, they got bigger and heavier and suspension on everything. I'm not saying this bike's for everybody, but I really enjoy it. I'm going to keep riding it as much as I can. So there's some stuff here that looks a bit homemade, and that's because it is. And because I'm designing this bike for function and for testing and for performance only. Almost nothing to do with how it looks, because if, I, if I'm concerned about that, then I'm not focusing on making it better for everything. The shape that you see and what you see here is all about what I needed to make this bicycle become a motorcycle that can go very far and, uh, and do a lot of stuff and uh, pedal. So it's, it's an interesting thing. Got a big uh, skid plate here too. Whole bottom side of this, you just lift up, slide across rock on that. This is a side hack that has a motor. Learn the side hacks are side hacks and they're not a normal machine. They, you know, you turn one way, they do one thing, you go the other way, they do the other thing, but it's a lot of fun. And they're really great for how much you can carry. This can carry a lot. A full size trash can filled with water would be easy to just drive down the road with this. We'll be doing some more videos. In this box, I have my new V2 bike. I'm gonna build mine up a little bit differently than my blue one. We'll show you how that goes together and how to do the tubeless and stuff like that. 